be a part of it. And I look forward to engaging with everyone in the room on a solution to the problem. So did you know it was going to be so controversial? Yes, sir. I knew I was stepping into a uh, pretty intense environment, but happy to lead the company and, and, and honored Good. to uh, offer solutions here to this problem. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Dr. Sally Goza. I'm a pediatrician from Fayetteville, Georgia, and I'm president-elect of the American Academy of Pediatrics. The children are counting on us. Good. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Christopher Butler. I'm executive director of Americans for Tax Reform. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we're concerned both about the public policy uh, implications of this for adult papers, but also we view it as something as a prerequisite of keeping people in the Liberty Coalition that are doing everything that we care so much about on economic, tax, and regulatory policy. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Gary Reedy. I'm CEO of the American Cancer Society and the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And I want to thank you for making this public health event. Very important position you have. What is your stance on vaping, e-cigarettes? How you have you have you taken a stance? Uh, yes, we have, and we are totally aligned and supportive with the position you took on September the 11th. We think that is a as you put forward, yeah. correct. Okay, let me take a look. Joe Brogan, Director of the Domestic Policy Council. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Scott Ealing. I'm the President of the American E-Liquid Manufacturing Standards Association. You know, it's a, kind of a long, we'll call it AIMSA. Uh, we were founded in 2012 and we open publish manufacturing standards for e-liquid products that anybody, uh, any manufacturing industry may use. And if you don't have high standards, you Dangerous things happen. That's what's been happening, right? Absolutely. Where people are using devices and other things that are not good, right? Potential. It's a problem. Thank you. Mr. President, Penny Nance, CEO and President for America, and we very much support what you put forward in September. We have half a million members, many of whom are moms. Concerned. In addition, they asked me, begged me, delayed me with notes to tell you that they love you and they support you all the way. We thank appreciate you. you. I have things thank to learn. Mr. President, thank you for having me here. I'm Tim Chapman, the Executive Director of Heritage Action. Um, we are very concerned about this issue. We want to play an active role in helping you get to the right solutions. More importantly, we are big supporters of many of the policies you've been pushing. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for the invitation to be here. My name is Harold Wimmer. I'm the President and CEO for the American Lung Association. And on behalf of our organization, I want to thank you for your leadership in bringing this issue to the public light uh, that it needed to be, and for also for you to also help us focus this on the kids and, and to really work uh, on this regarding the addiction. Much, Mr. President, for having me. Mike Huff, I'm State Senator from Frederick and Carroll County. We're actually home to Camp David, so we'd love to have you. Uh, and I, this is my Chief Staff for Congressman Alex Mooney from West Virginia. Sort of a probably second only to my wife, who was one of your original members that came down. I will do. Uh, Kellyanne Conway, Counselor to the and Mr. President, thank you very much for not shying away and looking the other way at an emerging public health crisis and for the courage to invite people from both sides of the issue in the cabinet room to have this conversation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. Mr. President, I'm Senator Mitt Romney. Uh, myself and uh, Senator Merkley have authored, offered uh, legislation that uh, is very consistent with policy from September, year to September, which is to ban flavors so that we don't have kids getting hooked on nicotine products. We also uh, insist that cartridges are tamper-proof, so kids can't add uh, contaminants to the cartridges. But uh, it's very consistent with your uh, your point of view. Thank you. Well, this is a, a very big subject, and it's a very complex subject, uh, probably a little bit less complex than some people think. Uh, but I'm here to listen, and I, I have very divergent views. Uh, who would like to start? Maybe I'd ask Alex just to uh, give us a little bit of a, uh, a background on where we are, what we're doing, what we're thinking about. This. Sure. Well, th thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for your work and leadership on this issue. Your attention to it demonstrates your deep commitment to Americans' health and, in particular, the health and well-being of our youth. 
Uh, while e-cigarettes can potentially be an off-ramp for adults that are addicted to combustible tobacco, we can all agree that we can't allow them to become an on-ramp to nicotine addiction and combustible tobacco use for our kids. As the President said, uh, we're here today to listen uh, to you, individuals and organizations that represent many different aspects of this issue. The question of how to regulate e-cigarettes is highly complex, so it's vital to gather an array of perspectives to understand the best way to go about protecting America's youth. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Mr. President, for organi organizing this gathering today, today, and we all look forward to hearing from our guests. Good. I do, too, and I want to. Uh, how about you start it? <clears throat> interesting point of view early on. Where do you stand? Well, I think that, you know, we clearly in Kentucky have, um, have a problem with teen smoking. Um, but I think that having access to vaping products is not necessarily the answer. And it goes beyond just the flavors, in my opinion. It, um, it is, we shouldn't have access um, for any vaping product, I think, until you're 21 years of age. Any, the, the more you introduce nicotine into a kid's brain, the more it um, has shown that they become addicted to other substances. So the longer that we can keep nicotine out of the hands of kids, I think it's in everyone's best interest. Well.